soft velocity. In this chapter, we are going to integrate time sheet. In this chapter, we are going to integrate this beautiful script. We can visualize our data and everything. And we are going to make it work with gradient and the rate five, of course. The first thing that we have to do, uh, we are not going to modify the skeleton at all. You may think that that's the way to do it, but no, that is not longer the way to do it. We can do it using a different way. I'm going to show you why. Uh, if, you do, if you leave the skeleton untouched, next time that you upgrade, you won't have to worry about your scripts. Therefore, we are going to make a small class. This small class is going to be a global class, so we can call it from any window that we want to have this, uh, let's call it extension. Of course, we saw in a, in a different chapter the class, but in this case, when I request timesheet, we are going to get the the script is going to build the script for us. Okay, and also let's see the script. We have to build an array, and this array cannot be static. So, using the extension. Is going to be useless. Let me show you why. I cannot build it using JavaScript on the extension because uh, this is going to be static and we gotta build it from the database. Also, this time I am going to make an H5 only application. How? I am going to check if the application is running under the web server. It is uh, running under H5. If not, well, we are going to stop the program. This is going to be an H5 only application. Now, let's get get back to the to the script. Let me show you what we have here. It's just a simple window. A browse the standard buttons. I can update the browse, of course. On the global extension, I'm using the beautiful calendar button that comes integrated with H5, so I don't have to write my own code to handle the calendar on the screen. On the browser, of course. Now, I am going to load this using file and quick scan the, the database, okay? So far so good. Now, the good part. Before the browse, I am going to write, I had a different, write, a different div here. Let's use this one. I am going to use this, uh, this div. I am up outputting this div before the browse. Don't worry, if you don't see uh, anything on the screen, it's fine. You don't have to see anything here. But the browser will see the div and it will act accordingly. On HTML for the page, before closing the head, I am calling the script. Again, I am calling the extension and it will return the script properly formatted. And on the part of JavaScript, I am calling the class that is going to build the array for the script itself. Let's take a look at the array. And in here, I, am, I, I have this class. I have a couple of strings. First, we will have to fill 
for list. I have a, a routine. We clear the list. We loop over the file. We add the, each and every single one of the records that we find. And after that, we are going to build the JavaScript code. This is the interesting part. I'm going to clean this, this string. Then I am going to loop through the list on the queue. The queue is going to be scanned and each one of them is going to be added to the script. And the script is, uh, the array is going to be very simple. It's just a, it's just a simple text. Of course, I have to add all the separators and everything, but it's very simple to use. And this is a very interesting part. Randomize color routine. We have to randomize the color because on the CSS file, what we have is uh, each one of the colors is using a text, col a text code. But you don't have to worry about it. It will work. The last parameter of the Of the array is going to be the barcode. Okay. After that, we have to close the script. But before that, before we return the script to the to the caller, we have to get the years. The years are. We need to pass the years as parameters to the array. So the the, sh the so the script will know what to do and how to draw everything and the years. Okay, so now we have it here and it will return. I am in decreasing the starting the starting year. I am increasing one year after the last uh, the, the higher number that I find for the years. It's a very simple script. See. Very, very simple. We are um, sorting the queue, and after that, I'm taking the first, the first year uh, that I find and the last one. It's that simple. We don't have to scan everything. That will return the script, the array, and the array will be the one in charge of. I'm building the the bars in this case the timeline well after get property what I have to do is use um, the width because I don't want to distribute the width of the tables for the script in this case what I want to do is to have the first two columns on a fixed um, width, so it will look better. Let's take a look at the script now. I am going to run it, and this time it is going to act differently. Um, in this case, it is, it is sending a message saying that this app is designed to run under H5. So let's go back to the browser. I have it here, and I have my app here. If we take a look at the source, we will see that we are building everything from the database, as it should be. Let me add one extra script, one extra item. Let's say that we spent a few months doing this. Boogie. All right. We have it here, and as you can see, everything has been properly drawn by the script. But I am using the regular script. As I downloaded the, the source code from GitHub, I put it on their uh, app broker, and it is uh, doing everything. On default. 
on the second chapter, we are going to modify everything so it will look fantastic and fully integrated into my H5 application using the same styles, colors, and everything.